back everybody uh, today we are back with another special video um, if you saw my last video got the block back from the machine shop I got it back before I got the head now I got the head with me and we pretty much threw together the short block so I'm gonna just move it a little closer you guys might not be able to see too much from that distance but yeah Again, 89.5 millimeter uh, overbore on the cylinders, 89.5 millimeter Weiss Co. 9 to 1 compression pistons. Decked the head, cleaned it up, sprayed it, threw in brass feet, uh, threw in brass, threw in brass breeze plugs with red Permatex uh, seal bonder, I guess you could say. And that's pretty much it. I threw in the rods. <laughs> Undersides looking. A little pretty as well. Eagle H beam rods, cleavite rod and main bearings. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. I don't know why I went into full spec detail about all that. But. So yeah, we've got our uh, refreshed head back from same machine shop. Um, glad I was able to get that back in time. And yeah, pretty much we're just gonna go through the process of getting our. Tome head gasket, 90 millimeters, 1.5 thickness on. Stock cams, uh, stock head, everything, you know, nothing crazy. It's been decked. Valves, n new uh, exhaust valve guides. That's pretty much like the only new part, really. But um, yeah, we've got our ARP head studs and our timing chain rebuild kit as well as a freshly painted valve cover the same one tome oil cap but yeah let's get this thing put together All right, so to fit these uh, 12 point uh, fasteners that come with the ARP uh, studs and stuff, you're gonna need a 12 millimeter straight, not those uh, ones that protrude to like a half inch uh, diameter. So I'm using a 3 8 right here and we're just gonna go ahead and hand time these and then we're gonna do the specified ARP torque sequence that it requires us to do. fasteners hand tightened down on the head I'm going to be following ARP's torque sequence guide so as you can see starting off from the we'll call this the top left corner where this little nub is sticking out we're gonna go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so that little nub is actually right here so we're gonna start off one two three four five six seven eight nine 
10. And we're going to be torquing up to 70 foot pounds in a series of three equal steps. So we're going to be going 25 off the first round, 50 off the second, and all the way to 70 on the last one. take off these cam journals. I'm just trying to interfere a little bit. I got distracted with those cam journals and I did not torque these last two. Alright, now we're going to move on to 50 foot pounds, which is 691 kilogram four centimeters. And I'm just going to do 690, just going to round down one. Now to our last sequence and probably our scariest one, 70 foot pounds, 967 kilogram four centimeters. So I'm doing 970 and let's lock her up. Wow, that is scary. Ooh, okay, there we go. That's that. Time to get the cams in. Thank you. All right, so I've snug down all the journals on the cam. So now they're all sitting flush in their little areas that they're supposed to rotate. And I backed up the nuts so they're all roughly hand tight at the moment. And so now I'm going to go in a sequence of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, doing each cam uh, individually. And first I'm going to go up to 19.3 kilogram four centimeters because that is spec to 1.4 foot pounds and then we're going to be going up to closer to around 10. I'm talking so much bro. All right, now we're gonna go at it. Um, doing our second series of torque numbers, outside in. I'm gonna be doing it up to 10 foot pounds. It's saying 6.3 to 8.7. I'm gonna be going to 10 foot pounds. And that is gonna be 138 uh, kilogram four centimeters. So that's the number I'm gonna be looking for. I'm using a digital uh, torque wrench this time just to be really accurate, I guess. Let's go. All right, that is our intake side. Um, torqued down to factory spec since it's bone stock head. Now we're gonna do the exhaust side. All right, same thing here. Two series of torque settings. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do five foot pounds off of the first round and then we'll do 10. I did 1.4 on the other, but that was just way too little. So five here to 10. So I'm gonna do 70 kilogram, four centimeters and then back to 140. That's intake side, or exhaust side. All right, different day, different steps we're gonna be taking. Uh, we're gonna jump into it, so today, we're gonna pretty much be throwing on our timing chain rebuild kit that I bought off of ITM. Well, I bought it off of Rock Auto, but it's ITM brand. So we're gonna be throwing that in. Got the head on, ARP hardware, cams, 
Tomei head gasket sandwiched down. I believe that's all we did. Threw in some spark plugs just so nothing would fall into the uh, spark plug holes. But yeah, we're just gonna go over this kit real quick and go into throwing it in. So this ITM uh, timing chain rebuild kit pretty much comes with all the components you need for a direct swap of all the components, I guess you could say, except for the hardware. For example, I'm still using some of the old hardware that uh, the old timing chain kit had, but all the gears are gonna be brand new, timing chain, uh chiming chain guides things like that except what i'm choosing to do is i'm actually going to be using my oem i think this is like the idler sprocket i i might be free guessing that but the reason why i'm doing that is because the one i got from itm actually had a little bit of rust on it it looks beat up from the backside i believe it was ran with a chain so i think this was already a used part i'm not too sure but yeah, I'm just not going to be using it. I also like that the OEM one is uh, drilled around the edges, you know, less rotational mass, less wear. So I'm going to stick with it. I think it's in very nice condition still. So yeah, everything else is going to be pretty much being replaced, but still using this. Still going to be using this like spacer that goes inside of that. I, I can't even really say what that is. Cam bolts and our spring tensioner hardware is still going to be the same. Everything else is new. And this is the same it's also pretty nice because it comes with the oil pump seal that goes on the inside of my valve cover that I've got here so that's gonna go right here and it comes with a new front main seal which is what you guys just saw on the other side right here so I'm probably gonna get this out press this in and then we'll just jump into the assembly So the torque settings for our chain guides here are going to be 10 foot pounds, which for me translates to 140 kilogram force per centimeter. And for our chain tensioners, they're going to be 5 foot pounds, which is 70 ish kilogram force centimeters. So. Tension on the spring. So I just got a big crescent wrench and put it on this bottom cam shaft type. Th this little like spacer that drives the oil pump. And I just turned over the motor a little bit so I could get the guide marker for this sprocket on the bottom here. So I can properly line it up. I move it forward slightly. Let's just keep tapping. I right, stop. All right. Next cam. Forward. All right, all right, all right. Uh, wait, wait, wait. No, I think we got it. Tap it, tap it, like tap it once. All right, there we go. All right, thank you. That was everything. All right, so here we've got all the guide markers properly lined up with all the guide chains. Like I said earlier, you're gonna wanna make sure there are one, two, three, four, five, six clear chain links in between the two guide marks for the cam ones. And that third one is gonna go down to your idler sprocket gear down here. And as you can see, that mark lined up there. All three marks are lined up. The back mark is lined up with this main chain as well as the bottom. And yeah. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and torque down our idler 
squat the gear first and then we're going to move on to our cam gears. We're going to be doing 65 foot pounds here which is 900 kilogram for centimeters and then this is going to be 100 foot pounds which is like 1400 kilogram for centimeters. Alright cool that's 65. Sorry head gasket. I'm also making sure to pull towards me rather than push so I don't do any over torquing. I might also have to hold down the cam. Probably. Hopefully that helps. Cool, 100 for pounds. 100 for pounds. Nice. All right, so now we've got our timing chain assembly fully torqued down up to spec and installed on the front of our motor. So now we're just going to go ahead and throw on our lower timing cover. I already went ahead, as you guys saw, and pressed in the new seal that came with the rebuild kit. And as well as there's going to be somewhere around here, these little oil seals. That's going to be for the oil pump exit right here. So we're just going to press that in, throw some RTV silicone, and bolt it up to the block. didn't fall out so the other little o-ring thing did fall out all right so I'm gonna throw in the new one and I'm just really hope we get this in a lot smoother than last time Alright, so that is our lower timing cover assembly. So far, I'm letting the uh, RTV gasket maker dry up. So I've just hand snugged all of these uh, bolts down. And so in about an hour and a half, I'll probably be torquing those down. But now we're just going to focus on getting our upper timing cover on, doing that gasket. Then honestly, jumping into doing our valve cover gasket, throwing on the valve cover, and then we'll probably jump to the oil pan. And then we'll probably leave it at that. Alright, so this is an almost complete long block assembly we've got here. As you've seen, I've hand tightened all of the front, uh, upper, and lower timing cover hardware. Just going to let that RTV sit. Once it hardens, then I'm going to torque everything down. After that, that's when I'm going to go start putting on the valve uh, cover gasket and then the valve cover. 
But in the meantime, my oil drain bung came, so I'm now gonna find a location on my oil pan to pretty much tap that in. And we're probably gonna do that so we can throw on the oil pan and throw on our valve cover and have a fully sealed engine. Nice. So this is the location I chose. I found a nice flush area, so hopefully I don't have to deal with any of these other ridges for a solid seal. Since I won't be welding it, I'll just be securing it with the provided nut and um, some Permatex. But yeah, let's get this hole big enough to insert this. Now I'm gonna go get a, a step bit. Got our bit. All right, so as you can see, we've got a nice hole drilled in a good spot where it's not gonna interfere with any of our oil pan bolts or, and you know, I'm not running AC. If I was running AC, this location actually would interfere with the AC bracket, but my car doesn't have AC, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Wow. But yep, good clearance. We're now just gonna assemble this with the uh, provided seal washers and some RTV. All right, so I've got the RTV just layered, one washer, just gonna put that through the washer over the nut to secure it all and now we're gonna squeeze this up real tight all right we're definitely gonna hope that that never ever leaks All right, so we got that tying up to the best of my ability. I don't think that's gonna leak. We've got the Permatex, we've got the sealed washers. Um, you guys can't see, but there's like this like stitch welded part of the oil pan on and I made sure to drill it in a spot where it wouldn't overlap and it would have a clean compression surface without having any like, you know, uneven surfaces. So I'm confident in this. You know, if it, if it leaks in the future, that's on me and I'm gonna have to take care of it then. But again, I think this is fine. And there's my mom. All right, so we've got our new rear main seal pressed into this uh, rear main seal housing. Gasket, RTV on both sides. We're just gonna press this on very slowly and carefully and then hand tighten it. All right, so it's been some time now. As you can see, it's a little bit darker out. Um, all the RTV has had plenty of time to set and dry. So I've now just gone and I've torqued all of my valve cover bolts, all the lower, the front, the side little pieces over here that I was working on, all to like 10 foot pounds. I think I did everything to 10 foot pounds. So yeah, now that all of this is secured, I'm just gonna lay the RTV in these little craters, front and back for the uh, valve cover gasket. I'm gonna throw that on and then we're gonna throw on the valve cover. And that's gonna be a wrap on today's video. So we pretty much got the entire long block fully assembled. I went ahead, I torqued down my head gasket bolts, 
everything is good. I was going to go ahead and put on my oil pan, but I didn't for two reasons. One of those reasons, I have my OEM S13 oil pickup here, and I'm actually going to be upgrading to an S14 that I bought off of some OEM Nissan parts dealership. So I'm just waiting for that to come in. So I'm going to need to have that in the car before I can get the oil pan in. And then second thing on my rear main seal, I don't know if you guys saw my uh, white bunny clutch kit install that I posted a couple, like a year ago, um, maybe a year and a half ago. But uh, when I was putting my rear main seal back in, I snapped one of the bolts. So I left it like that. And now unfortunately, putting it together, I snapped another bolt. So now I have one, two, three, four out of six bolts and I'm not feeling too confident with that. So I'm gonna get those bolts out and just, I'm gonna get some new ones. Probably gonna do that off screen a different day, probably tomorrow. But um, yeah, in the next video, you'll probably see the oil pan on or I'll show you guys that I'm gonna just put it on. But essentially it's gonna be all of our exterior engine components we're gonna be working on. I'm probably going to be doing the intake manifold side, getting gaskets replenished, replaced, uh, closing off hoses and lines and things like that. And then we're going to be, we're still waiting for some gaskets and some locking tabs for the hot side, for the manifold and for the turbo and stuff. So I will tackle that after the intake side. And then essentially bolt up the transmission, get it up on the hanger and throw it back in the car. But yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I don't know what type of vibe this video took. I don't know if it was straight to the point and like just a lot of work. If I added some music to this, I haven't edited it yet. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope to see you guys on the next one and keep rooting for me if you guys are because I am so excited to get this thing on the streets. And I'm just, it's my first turbo car. My first turbo manual drift car. Whole bunch of firsts. I'm excited. Thanks for watching guys.